Hi guys, it's June here. Welcome back to the Novel Channel and wherever you are around the world, I hope you guys are staying safe and feeling fabulous. Today's video is going to be a very quick one. I know I say that all the time and then it ends up being a 20 minute video, but okay, this time it's really going to be a quick video because I want to talk about these books, but they are due at the library, so I have to be really quick about them. So let's get rolling. Today guys, I want to talk about it, an author that is completely new to me but this author has been around for some time and this person is Ying Pui Ngon. Okay, so I've got two books here by Ying Pui Ngon. Ying Pui Ngon is a recipient of the 2003 Cultural Medallion for Literature. He has published 26 volumes of poetry fiction, essay, plays and literary criticism in Chinese. So I realize, you know, these days I'm kind of exploring translated work and uh, I can't remember when was the first time I um, saw this name and decided to uh, pick up his books. Um, I think it was probably this book that caught my attention first, but I actually read this one first. Now this one is The Non-Existent Lover and other stories. This, okay, can we just take a moment to appreciate the translation of Go Bing Chu? I think sometimes the translators, they do not get enough credit, okay? Let's give them some credit. Um, straight up, I gotta tell you, both books being translated still is amazing in English. I mean, I wish I could read Chinese. I can't, uh, so, you know, I'll just have to rely on the good work of these translators. Now, in this particular book, uh, The Non-Existent Lover and Other Stories, this features a selection of short stories written between 1960s and 2000. So this collection um, charts Ying Pui Ngon's evolution in subject matter and style over time. Now, the earlier stories, written at a time when Ying was known for his modernist poetry, exude solitude and melancholy and deal with themes such as wanton rebelliousness of the youth, sorry, of youth, or the poets shuttling between death and dream. From the 1970s onwards, he turned his attention to societal concerns, depicting a lonely writer who falls in love with one of his own characters an unhappy man yearning for life abroad who ends up in a mental hospital, an unemployed man who finds joy in his friendship with a white bird, and another who worries that he might turn into a flower. Okay, other stories introduce us to a parrot who gets taken to court, an ant enamored with his own silhouette, and a disembodied mouth, sorry, a disembodied mouth worshipped by the public. Sarcastic? Darkly humorous and surreal, so you know why I'm liking his work now. Ying's writing depicts everyday life in all its absurdism and glory. Now, I... Okay, these are short stories, so if you want to kind of explore his style of writing, I highly recommend that you try this book, okay? So this is actually published by City Book Room. Now, City Book Room does have a store here in Singapore. Please do go support them. The person who runs it is a really lovely lady, and I'm sure she'll be able to help you to pick up either this book or any book that you will enjoy reading. Uh, I'll put the link in the description box below so you know where to locate them. Now, published by City Book Room, uh, this, if you want to know his writing style, this is like an introduction to Ying Pui Ngon's work. The stories here are a little dark. Um, it's kind of like, you know, it's like Twilight Zone sometimes, but it's so enjoyable. Um, I especially like, okay, uh, a couple of stories here I want to mention. Um, there is a story, see I wrote it down here, it's called The Tidbit Stall Woman. I like this story because it reminded me of my grandfather's shop, um, which was um, in Chinatown in, in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. I, I really have so many wonderful memories of that place and with all the rapid changes that's been happening in KL or actually in Kuala Lumpur or in Singapore, anywhere for that matter, um, you know, a lot of these places with a lot of history, uh, either they, are, they have changed so much, they are practically beyond recognition, they have become very tourist-driven, um, 
and uh, yeah so it's changed so much to the point like it was never there and that's kind of sad so I do hope that you know whether it's in Malaysia or Singapore or anywhere around the world that people you know really make an effort to conserve you know all these old buildings for example um, it's such a pity because once they're gone they're gone and all the memories are gone as well and uh, yeah, so that the story of the tidbit store woman kind of like reminded me of that a little bit. Uh, and then there's another story in here. Um, it's called um, The White Butterfly. That story actually scared me a little bit. Um, I find it so haunting. And after reading it, I was like kind of disturbed. Um, it's kind of like a cross between reality and dreamland. And I don't know, it almost feels as if in the dream itself which might also be a reality is like crossing the line between this world and the other world yeah so i found that story very haunting but you know me even though it's scary even though it's dark i still want to read it okay because it's you know the kind of story i like um another story that i want to mention is of course the story of woody the story of woody okay uh it talks about um writers um and what they're like and, and how they are all the different um the different writers that gather in the, at the coffee house um i i don't know i guess it kind of also reminds me of what people are still like these days especially when it comes to the creative type okay when it comes to discussing their art um so yeah i find that quite uh, I find it very appealing uh, because I see a lot of uh, characters there that I know that I have met before as well. So yeah, so that's nice. Um, towards the um, at towards the end of the book, okay, they ha he has a okay. I would I would say that this book okay includes um, some flash fiction, and these stories are really short, as you can see. Like for example, Big Mouth. Okay, here it's only two pages okay I would say one page and a little bit more here so um, you know to be able to deliver a story and still create such an impact with so few words I think that's amazing um, writing there and of course great translation uh, by uh, Go Bing Chu okay who has translated books by various Chinese authors so yeah so if you want a taste of what your point your points um, writing is like I, I highly recommend that you start with this one okay and you can get your copy from city book room I'll put the link in the description box below now once you are hooked like me I'm such a fan right now uh, you can then move on to this one which is lonely face look at the tabs okay so if you can look at the tabs you know that there are all the lines that I have marked um, now this story is um, set in Singapore in the late 1980s. Oh, that's a long time ago. Late 1980s, as women gain power and independence, what's an insecure guy to do? Lonely Face is the story of a man on the cusp of middle age, left behind by changing times. Now, oh, I think some of us can relate to that. Okay, fleeing his crumbling marriage on an overnight bus to Genting Highlands, uh, he tries his luck uh, at slot machines rather than the vagaries of modern romance. This snapshot of a society in flux, uh, in flux is a new, uh, newly translated early work by acclaimed novelist Ying Puing On. Okay, so this one here is published by Ballastia Press. You can order your copy online as well. I will put the link in the description box below. Now, this is one of the books that I've been wanting to read for so long. And so I finally got hold of it. And uh, well, I mean, like I said, it just looking at the tabs, you know, there are a lot of lines here that I really, really enjoy. Um, and I found that, um, how should I say, it, it kind of like, um, uh, it struck me, you know what I mean? Okay, so for, like for this line, it talks about this character um, in, the, in the story um, and how he is labelled a no-yield graduate. I find that is so heartbreaking. You're a no-yield graduate, you know, you've gone to university and then, you know, you're not reaping uh, like you're not reaping the rewards that you know you're expected to you know like all the things that you're you know expected to accomplish as you guys know um, in a city like Singapore for example you know it's really 
competitive you know everybody works really hard at school you know everyone's aiming for really good results in you know in all the major exams and everyone wants to go to university and all that so when i guess it's just not in singapore i guess it's in most places as well so when you graduate you know everyone your family and you have such high expectations on how far you're supposed to go in your career and sometimes you know life just does not work out that way you know and uh, yeah so i found that term no yield graduate kind of like it's kind of sad okay um as and all these and the well without giving too much away i have to be careful because i don't want to like you know give the story away but it's basically with this guy you know he's hitting like he's hitting middle age and you know it's he's not as you know wildly successful as he has hoped his his wife had has just left him uh, and so he's going through all these emotions but the thing that really struck me about this book is how um, how well um, the author has described the whole situation of being a filial son because um, he had to he, he kind of like had to decide between you know his wife and his father whom he never really had a very good relationship with. Um, it wasn't awful, but it was just distant. And uh, and of course, you know, his wife was not happy about them having to have have them having to look after his father or her father-in-law. And uh, yeah, so it creates all sorts of conflict. And uh, I think those those situations are very real um, because it's not easy to be a caregiver. And of course, we all want to be good kids, and you know, and especially in the Asian context, uh, filial parties is you know it's very important. And you know, when his father was like so ill, and it's, in a way, I think he was like immobile. It you know, it really takes a lot out of a person, uh, a caregiver, to look after someone like that, and it can be frustrating. These challenges are real so the author has done a great job describing this whole conflict uh, this whole relationship the dynamics between his wife and him and, and all these issues uh, so I really enjoyed this story um, I highly recommend it it's not I mean again these are not stories like uh, you know these are not fairy tales um, this story what it is I can safely say this story is, this is life. This is real life and it is written, um, you know, really in a, in a way that, I mean, it's a small book as you, you can see, but I know when I was reading it, uh, it really, it, there were so many passages that I felt like, oh, oh my gosh, I can, I can understand that. I can, I can see that, you know, and I felt that he expressed all those situations, especially the tension in the relationships, uh, between him and his dad, his wife, uh, and even his son, I think you know, all the all the emotions that he's going through. Um, I think that's really well explored in this book. Now I keep saying he because there is no name to this person, and I tell you what's also very special about this book: the char the main character in this book um, is ha is is uh, how should I say? The main character in this book is described from, you know, three different perspectives, from a first person perspective, a second as well as a third person perspective, you know. So it's I, you and he. Now, this is a very interesting style of writing, which um, also what I really appreciate is at the end of the book, there is an interview with the author and he kind of explains why he has written it this way. Um, and I love the fact that he has done that and he's done it so well that, you know, when I was reading it, I wasn't even aware that I would, you know, that he was switching from I to you to he and back and forth and all that. I was just reading the story because I was just so engrossed with the whole process of what this guy is going through. And um, yeah, I didn't really pick up on it. But yet I was able to follow the story. I mean, seriously, that takes some skill in writing. So yeah, so that's something that I really wanted to mention about this book. And also, yeah, you, you can, you know, read a little bit about the interview. Um, 
with the author as well so you get to know about his style and why he has decided to write it in this way. So um, I am a new fan of Ying Pui Ngon. I, I have another book. Um, I was so fortunate because someone gifted me another book uh, by Ying Pui Ngon. I seriously cannot wait to read all his other works. I think uh, I've not felt this way about an author uh, in a long time, okay? I mean, like, I read something and suddenly I want to read all their works, okay? Yeah, I've only felt that with, uh, I think it would be Elizabeth Taylor, the, the author, Daphne du Maurier, um, as well as, um, there's one more author that I felt that way about, uh, Graham Swift. Yeah, that's right, Graham Swift. I think I got there. Only with these three authors that I, I, you know, after I read like one book and I go like, I got to read all of them. And now I, yeah, another one to the list would be this author, Ian Pui Ngon. So um, I would highly recommend that you guys give this a try. Uh, do read it. Start with this one because these are short stories. If you like this, I tell you, you're going to love this. Okay, I'll put the link in the description box below guys. I hope you enjoyed this really quick video because you know, like I said, this, these books, they are due back um, at the library and I really should return them on time because I do not want to pay any more fines, okay? I think I've paid enough fines in the past that they should have named the entire wing of one of the libraries after me. I probably contributed to the construction of the entire lobby or something. Okay guys, um, well that's it. Thank you so much for watching guys. Please remember to give us a thumbs up for this video if you have enjoyed it and give us a thumbs up if you had not enjoyed it. It doesn't matter, it doesn't cost you anything. Please make sure you subscribe and turn the notification on so you do not miss out on anything. Well, until I see you again, remember to be kind and be brave. No bull. Bye!